Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Uh, we put out a video uh, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and also a live stream on Thursday. So if you subscribe to this channel and click the bell, you can get notifications of all of that. Today's question is from Jerry Co. KK6JWK. So his question has to do with the new uh, Cushcraft HV4E antenna, which we recently reviewed on this channel. And it's a wonderful antenna. And I hope that uh, you have a chance to take a look at it. Now, MFJ, uh, MFJ Enterprises is in the process of quitting business. They say that uh, it's been a good run, but they've never really recovered from the pandemic. And so they're just going to have to, to go away. I am uh, very saddened by that because I think MFJ is an absolute requirement for the radio amateur community. They make so many things. I hope some white knight steps in and takes them over and uh, keeps the tradition going. The MFJ catalog is very crowded with many things that are very similar to each other. So some turnaround artist would probably pare that way down to a third of what they sell now. But this HV4E was one of the first new antennas that Cushcraft has come up with in ages. And uh, they sent one to me and uh, we put it up, we did a few videos about it. It works really well for being a compromise antenna and it's uh, less than uh, 20 feet tall. So this is a good thing to stick in a backyard next to a bush and hide uh, from your homeowners association while still getting a pretty good performance. Now what he's talking about, um, he has a ham shack on the second floor. Now, I know other people who have ham shacks on the second floor. It's not an ideal situation, but it certainly can be made to work. Now, let me tell you how you run uh, your feed line and so on for this. So we're going to take a look at the whiteboard. Now, the let's look at a house. Okay. And it's got two stories. And here's your door and two stories. Here's your antenna. The cable for the antenna should come down to the ground. Very often people will put a ground rod here and you will keep, uh, you will connect this to a lightning arrestor here. Run the cable over to here and you've got a ground rod here and you have lightning arrestors here. This is the primary ground. This one is a secondary ground, okay? Now your, your equipment is up here, so what you're going to do is bring this cable down to the ground rod and then from here take the cable in here and also you're going to have your single point ground for the station is going to be in here and it also goes down to that same ground rod. Now you say, why can't I just go in the house? Because you don't want lightning to follow that path. You want lightning to come down here to a lightning arrestor, another lightning arrestor, and then come into equipment that is grounded to that same ground rod. Now over here, your utility has uh, wires, okay, like this, and coming into your house, they, there are three wires usually. There's neutral, which is connected to ground out here. There's a ground rod at the bottom on most of these, and the neutral is connected down there, as well as this neutral. Okay, then you've got minus 120 and plus 120. So you can add these two and get 240 for like your dryer 
or whatever you may have in there. If you've got a large amplifier, you will want to do that as well. Now this neutral comes down here to a ground rod. Okay, uh, some areas of the country, they use what's called an oofer ground. And yes, that is a word, oofer. That's an E right there. You can look that up, and it's a real person. That's some guy's name. Anyway, an oofer ground is if you have a house built on a pad, uh, if you take a piece of uh, rebar, single piece, and run it across this right here, that can act as a ground too. And if you're in Arizona or something like that, you may have an oofer ground rather than a standard earth ground. Now, let me tell you why it is so important that you connect this ground rod with this ground rod. And usually it will be number six, stranded, bare, copper. Now, the reason for this is if there's a lightning strike, you're going to get some pickup here and there will be some pickup over here. But every ground in the house is connected together. Note that the connection wires are outside of the house, so the lightning doesn't get in the house, okay? Your equipment is kept at the same potential as the power supply, which has its green wire ground connected over here, and so on. So that's why you have these uh, connected together, so that the potentials stay the same. Now, if you really want to do the utmost here, you will get a book from the ARRL. If you really want to go all the way on this, there is a standard that you can look at. The ARRL publishes a book called Grounding and Bonding for the Radio Amateur, and it is the second edition that you want to see because that has been brought into concert with the normal electrical code so that we can do things the way we want to. Now, I'm going to call that book aspirational. That's something that we aspire to, okay? Uh, it can get very expensive putting in all these extra ground rods, so we do the most essential one first, which is the one where the lightning arresters are before they go into the house. Then the second most important thing is bonding that to your uh, utility ground. And then you get into the third and so on about where you put extra ground rods where the ground rods are long. Now, I noticed that I mentioned that that wire that connects or bonds the station ground with the utility ground is stranded bare, stranded so it has extra surface area for the high frequency stuff, bare so that when you bury that in the ground, it kind of sort of acts like a uh, ground rod itself. It's grounded to the ground, although it's not really deep enough to do what a true ground rod does, but it's something that you can do. So, okay, I think I answered uh, your question. He also asked the question whether the HV4E can be used on a roof, and the answer is yes. If you have it elevated, the classic uh, thing is to say two tuned radials for each band, but you can also just spread out a regular radial field uh, up on the roof too, either way. You can hold these radials in place with tiny little nails that will go just into the wood and then the um, asphalt in the roof will hold them in place. Or if you have a metal roof, you can just use little alligator clips to clip them uh, to the uh, ridges on the uh, roof. And 
there you have it, it'll work fine. I'm particularly impressed by the antenna. What worries me is that MFJ will not have gone into full production on this antenna and they won't be available to us. Now, uh, MFJ has oh, a lot of things that are happening because of that. I'll let you go check the MFJ webpage uh, or just go to Google News and search on MFJ Enterprises and it will take you right uh, to what is going on. I find it very, very, very sad, not just because 200 people are gonna lose their jobs, but because those people have particular expertise in building things for ham radio that's gonna get lost unless these people get other jobs in ham radio. But if Joe, who worked at MFJ in one of the construction departments, then goes off to a gas station, well, he's already got another job. He's not going to come back if, if somebody, uh, some white knight, comes in and picks up MFJ. Very sad. I'm very sad about it. I know Martin. I've met him. Uh, I know uh, uh, Rich, um, who I've worked with many, many times on things for these videos. So anyway, there you have it. Please subscribe, click like, click the bell, tell your friends about it, and go to Patreon at patreon.com uh, slash KE0OG. And until we next meet, 73.